anything you want us to look at? No, online? Um, not at the minute, no, not at the minute. Um, yeah, we have been to quite a few, haven't we? I wanted to do something with my husband together. My husband's more techie than I am. Okay, he's he's our, the brains of the outfit. But I wanted us to do something together, and that was the reason why I got involved in, in the Raspberry Pi to start off with, because I thought it'd be nice to have a shared hobby. And nobody's saying, oh, I thought you'd all say, oh. Okay, but the other thing about it is, I train teachers at Edge Hill University, and I really think that there's quite a lot of lacklustre um, IT teaching that goes on and I've been trying to I've been going to lots of Raspberry Jams and I've been seeing lots of things with robots going on and lots of things with um, you know with all kinds of things the pie face with Andrew and diff different <coughs> things that I found really really interesting but for me I keep thinking how am I going to get this to a year seven pupil okay how am I going to get year seven pupils interested in this and <coughs> that stemmed another train of thought and I thought about one of my hobbies which is genealogy okay for those of you that don't know what genealogy is it's tracing your family tree and one Sunday afternoon we had a bright idea didn't we we sat down together oh it's like the coffee advert this is <laughs> we had a bright idea and we thought right we'll go and have a look and see if we can get the raspberry pi working with genealogy to see if we could get it up, up and running and actually trace our family tree on the Raspberry Pi. Now this is something else that brings me to why I've got nothing to show you because my son um, is away at the moment, he's gone away for two years and he's taken all my SD cards with him to take pictures so I won't see him for two years so I've no Raspberry Pi because I can't bring it to show you but what I did want to show you was that people create masses of boxes of family records and they carry them around with them to various you know organizations and i thought it would be a tremendous opportunity to teach e-safety to children because one of the things that banks ask for are things like your mother's maiden name and different bits and pieces like that and i thought it would be really good to use that as a principle to teach children about keeping your information safe because what do they do when they've done the family trade? They publicise it on Facebook and I just thought it was really, really interesting. Okay, and that's my contribution to this evening. And we spent the Sunday afternoon, didn't we, trying to get it up and running. Well, Dawn sent me a challenge that the organisation that, that we belong in, there's a lot of people who are elderly and they don't have a few hundred quid lying about for a laptop or a, a desktop or so on. But they are interested in family, tracing the family tree. And so they always have to go to family history centres where they, they have access to PCs and so on. And we figured that they probably could afford 25, 30 quid rather than two or 300 quid. So if we got a, an SD snapshot of something that could help them to do their genealogy, and we found a product called Grants Online that's a Linux product. Yeah. In fact, it's quite it's open source. And so Grants. Gramps. As in yeah. Grandpa, Gramps. So we, we tried it, we put that on a, an SD card, flashed it, and then just created an icon for it on the desktop so that they, you know, because they're not Linux experts. They're not going to be able to, to go down to the terminal and start entering command lines and so on. So getting this SD flashed enabled us to then start going around and showing these elderly people how they can actually get into that and just with a, a TV that has the correct <coughs> connections they could plug this thing in at the side and if you go to somewhere like Sainsbury's get some velcro strips that are double sided tape you can actually just stick it to the, the side of their video cab cabinet set it up so that they can switch across get their uh, router that they, some sort of router that they typically have to be able to get um, Sky or NTL or something plug it into that and they've got a constant connection to the internet through the television as well as do the facility to, to do the genealogy. And it, and it does work, you know, it, it did work, it was quite good. It was quite good, wasn't it? We enjoyed yeah. doing it. And the thing was, what was really annoying is a couple of weeks afterwards, I was going down to London with Alan to, um, to an event down there and I went into a shop and after having spent two, two three hours, was it figuring it out one Sunday afternoon, we bought a magazine and it was all there in the magazine for us. I was so mad. I was so angry that it was there in the magazine. But there you go. So that's our contribution to the, this evening. I'm sorry I have nothing I to show you. Yeah. I'm a, an IT director and 
for the past five, ten years, I've really struggled to get young people, 18, 19, 20 year old, coming into the business with programming knowledge. And another aspect of why I'm interested in the pie is because I'm hoping that the teachers amongst you, and I can recognise one or two of you here, are going to be able to start showing them the, the kind of thing. That's why I asked Ben when he said, here, fill out my lesson plans for next year. Does it have to be on the curriculum or is it things that I'll actually be interested in, in teaching them because it will benefit them in coming looking for a job through me at a future date? And there's such a disparity between what's taught in school and the syllabus of ICT that hopefully changing it into a computing or computer science focus will actually bring back some of the stuff that I, I got, <coughs> I can't remember it was that mentioned earlier that they, they were into computers at the very early age. I got lent, lent one when I was 16, I'm now 49, so that was a lot of years ago, 19, 1980. And it was a, a Sinclair Spectra, uh, not a Sinclair Spectra, it was a Radio Shack TRS-80. You probably don't even re remember one of those. Yeah, I yeah. see grade one of them. Right. And I got lent uh, a monitor which had an actual something like 8 inch disk drive in the side of it and a dot matrix printer that woke everybody up whenever you printed it. So if you accidentally printed a, a listing of a programme, <laughs> people were awake for a long time. And I want to see that back in kids. I, I honestly sat up and many, I pro probably every third night I didn't go to sleep and then I needed to for two nights and then I could manage another third night. And the excitement that we had then about learning about the insides of a computer and what you could make it do, rather than just these things, iPhones and iPads and Androids and so on, where you've just got it as a commodity that you can use. Don't have an issue with them, but they don't give us that buzz. That they're, just, they're, they're just for our use. We need things that people can actually understand what's going on inside them. And that's why I love the Pi as a, a platform for that. Okay, thank you. So, that's awesome. Thank you.